Hello everyone. In this video, we'll try to understand what is microservices, right? Before we talk about microservices, let's try to understand what is services, right? For example, uh, you went to a restaurant, right? And obviously you order something. To whom you'll order? You'll order it for a service boy, right? Typically what you do? He'll take a order from you. He'll go to the chef and give you order to the chef. Chef will make it. Again, he'll get back order back to you. Finally, of course, he'll get you the bill, right? So the typically his job is to serve your request, right? Now coming to our world, software world, right? For example, you logged into a, an email account, maybe a Gmail account. What do you do? First, you'll enter username and password, then you say sign in. When you click on sign in, it's a service. What it does, it will take your username and password and it will do authentication. If it is a valid user, then it will allow you to log in, right? That's one service. And checking an email is a service. Sending an email is a service. Deleting an email is a service. So everything is a service behind the screens, right? Now, to understand, when I say services in IT world or software world, it is a piece of logic, a software logic that will serve your request, right? Now, what is micro? In general, what is micro? A small piece, right? So what is a microservices? A small, small services, right? In case of an email application, right? Let's say Gmail application, right? Sign in is one service, right? Checking an email is one service. Deleting an email service, sending an email to service. Everything is a separate, separate service, right? It's a, Gmail is a huge application. What they made it, so in such a huge application, they made a small, small services, right? All those small services does a different job, right? Sending an email, checking mail to, to a different job, right? To a different services altogether. But the end goal is to build in an application. In our case, a Gmail application, right? Okay, so still, if you still don't understand uh, what is, you know, microservices, let's take a small e-commerce example, okay? Yeah. So here you see a monolithic approach and the microservice approach typically you might have heard about monolithic approach right so it is one of the traditional approach you'll have a single piece of code that serves all your purpose right when you talk about maybe an amazon or flipkart so you have different services like like payment gateway product search and maybe your analytics like what are the product you search and what product you may like right? recommendation engine for example Right. And finally, you purchase the product. Right. Now, if you see in monolithic, all these services are in a single piece of code. Right. For example, uh, typically, right, we we do window shopping, right, because of this pandemic, we are doing window shopping on Amazon and Flipkart. Right. So if you see, mostly I do a product search. Let's say in a day, if I visit 10 times, not sure even if I buy one time, right? So most of the cases, what I do is a product search, right? Because most of the users do a product search. Obviously, there are more users who are doing product search. In that case, we have to scale this particular product search. In monolithic approach, what happens? You have to scale the whole application, right? If I want to scale this particular product search approach, I mean service as all the logic is built into the same piece of code you have to scale the analytics I mean the payment gateway shopping cart whatever it is whole application you have to scale it right let's say for example if if payment is down the whole application is down right that's a monolithic by now hope you understand why we need microservices on your right side if you see this payment is a different piece and the analytics is a different piece and the product search, shopping cart, everything is separate. Now, in, in monolithic approach, everything is a single service. In case of microservices, it multiple services. You're breaking the monolithic approach into multiple services. That's called microservices, right? In this case, if I want to scale only this product search, I can simply scale. Right. In case if if I do some code changes, maybe some enhancements, some bug fixes, whatever in the product search, 
I can deploy only this product search. I need not to touch the other services. Where in case of monolithic, if I want to do any changes in any of this service, I have to deploy my whole application. Right? That's the power of microservices. Right? And the another best part about microservices is this is the the critical, crucial, whatever you call it, my favorite part, right? <clears throat> in case of monolithic, you will be stick with only one programming language. Whether if you choose Java, you have to develop all your applications in Java. If you choose Python, you have to choose all your applications in Python. But where in case of microservices, you have your choice of selecting your programming language, choice of selecting a multiple programming language. Where in case of as we know, right, Python is very good, has very good packages for analytics, right? So for analytics, I use Python, right? And for payment gateway and the shopping cart, we need more security. So I go for Java, maybe for my front-end application, I may go for PHP. So here, I have wide variety of, you know, options to, to choose my programming language and technology stack, right? As I said in monolithic, you have to stick with one programming language, where in case of microservices, you have option to select multiple programming language. Awesome, right? Now, yes, right? As by now, we might have understood, right? Highly maintainable and scalable. It is easy to maintain and it is used to scale whenever user grows, loosely coupled. There is no dependency on each of the services. All the services are working independently, not dependent right and independently deployable we discussed right if i do any changes in the payment i'll deploy only that particular service and technology programming choice as we discussed organize their own business capabilities we discussed owned by a small team obviously right so i have a separate teams java team python team you know uh future team etc etc now well we we discussed about the advantages of microservices do you really think any product that comes with 100% pros or 100% advantages, definitely not. There will be some disadvantages too. One of the disadvantage, the major disadvantage is when you talk about you know, the monolithic approach, what happens? You, have, you need a single infrastructure to deploy this particular application, right? Maybe a simple, a single server where you can deploy your application. But where in case of microservices, do you really think you need a single infrastructure? <laughs> no, right? The complexity on the infrastructure is increased in microservices, right? And the security. Now you here you have only one application. If you secure your one application, that is well and good. Here you have many services, right? So you have to secure all your services. That's one of the comp. So now when you talk about right the complexity from the application development, right, moved from application development to the infrastructure, right? <laughs> there will be some complexity, right? But at the same time, right, we also seen the advantages, right, in terms of scaling, maintaining, dependency, all those stuff, right? But yes, as we know, there will be some disadvantages. So these are I mostly see these are the two major disorder infrastructure and the security, right? So maintenance of the we have many applications to deploy, right? So this is one of the major disadvantages I see in microservices. So yeah, that's it. I want to cover in this video. So hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.